fellow readers, and welcome to my first book tag. So recently, Jesse the Reader posted a brand new book slash bookshelf tag called the Bookshelf Time Capsule Tag. And since I'm super nostalgic, it sounded perfect for me, so I decided to give it a try. So I wrote down all of the questions slash prompts on here. The first prompt is give an overview of your shelves and tell us where they are from. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> this bookcase has been with me at least since I was six or so because one of my earliest wow. memories is sitting in front of this exact same bookcase picking off books for my parents to read to me so I have no clue what kind of shelf it was called who manufactured it or whatever um, for context sake I was born in 1997 so Basically, it's just your standard three-shelf bookcase, so. <laughs> As for the overview, here are the books. In all of their glory. So that's what they're currently like. Yeah, I am very happy that it has held up for so long through multiple moves and all that. Yes, it is a little worn around the edges, but being the nostalgic person I am, I love it to death. <laughs> Number two is which shelf on your bookshelf is your favorite? Um, that's kind of close between my fantasy shelf and this middle shelf, but, um, I guess I would have to say my Melanie Dickerson shelf here. Um, I do still call it my Melanie Dickerson shelf, even though there is some fantasy spilling over onto it, because that's what it was designated as. And, uh, I know there's currently a book missing here, but that's because it's up there for the impromptu book club that we're currently doing over on the Melanie Dickerson book fan page. So, <laughs> Melanie Dickerson is one of my absolute favorite authors. I would say that this is probably my favorite, um, especially with the knickknacks that I managed to theme with it, with the this figurine here. And then this heart plushie over here. So, yeah. That's also one of the most colorful shelves on my bookshelf. So, yeah, I love it. Let me give you an overview of it. This is what it looks like. Over there are the fantasy books, but from where the heart is... All the way over here is on Melanie Dickerson. So prompt number three is, do you keep every book you read or do you ditch the ones you don't end up loving? I do end up getting rid of the books that I do not end up loving. I try to be sure that I'm going to love the book before I even buy it. So that I don't have to constantly unhaul, but every now and then there will be a book that I didn't end up enjoying as much as I thought I would, or that I grow apart from and is basically just sitting on the shelf and taking up a space that could be given to a new book. So I do end up getting rid of books even no matter how careful I am. <laughs> <laughs> Number four is, what do you do when your bookshelves fill up? Okay, so again, I will occasionally look through my bookshelf and see, are there any books that I didn't 
necessarily love that I can get rid of? Are there any books that I've grown apart from and just will probably never read again that I can get rid of? Um, I've never really done a huge unhaul, so it's not like a ton of space is suddenly freed up. But uh, it will free up enough space that I never have to worry about my bookshelves overflowing. I actually have never faced my bookshelves being absolutely chock full. I cannot shove another book in here. Um, like if I had these books stacked horizontally here, vertical instead, then yeah, I would be facing that. So I guess also after seeing what books I can get rid of, seeing what books stack horizontally well together. So it actually feels kind of weird to say that. I've never really had my bookshelves overflowing. I mean, it was getting kind of close before I did my most recent unhaul, but like. It wasn't a danger, per se. But yeah. It feels kind of weird to realize that. <laughs> Number five. Do you have an organization method? Or is there an organization method you've been wanting to try? I do generally tend to stick to organizing by genre. Um, I'll switch it up occasionally along with that. Recently, I have gone back to organizing from least favorite to most favorite, um, along with several subcategories in there, mostly by uh, age groups. But uh, yeah, that's usually what I stick to. I tried the alphabetization method and even though I stuck within the genre, I really wasn't that happy with it. Any organization methods that I want to try that I haven't already? Um, I can't think of any at the moment. This is just what works best for me, so. Life fix within the broken. <laughs> Number six, how often do you reorganize your shelves and how do you approach it? So, reorganize, I typically tend to do about twice a year on average. I say that in quotation marks because, I mean, Several times it's often just adding books on that doesn't require shuffling how things are organized to make room for them. But I do still kind of call it an organization method because I still like to keep my shelves clean so I'll take the books off, dust off the shelves, and then Put them back on in pretty much the exact same spots and just add in the new book. Uh, but yeah, I do it about twice a year. Once shortly after Christmas. And then once in the beginning of summer around my birthday. Because that's usually when I get new books. So... This last year, though, I did end up doing reorganizations more than twice. I think it was at least three times this year so far because I was trying to stay sane <laughs> with the whole uh, pandemic that we have going on. So. We'll, uh, see what happens next year. <laughs> Number seven. Is there a shelf on your bookshelf that bothers you no matter what you do? Um, I wouldn't say it bothers me per se, but my bottom shelf, which is my mixed genre shelf, I mean, I would really love to be able to have one shelf for each particular genre um, 
since that's how I'm organizing my books, but I don't have enough books to do that, so <laughs> it's not, and it's not really like it bothers me per se, but I guess that's the closest answer that I can give for that one. <laughs> Number eight, which book color dominates your shelves? I didn't actually ever think of this before. Um, well, most of the fantasy books are basically black. I have quite an awful lot of pale slash peach on my bottom shelf. I do also have a decent amount of blues. So, okay, I guess black, peach slash pale, and blue. Okay, I guess, uh, blue. <laughs> Which actually, now that I think about that, I'm really happy about that because blue's my favorite color. So, number nine, what's the most damaged book on your shelf? And tell us how it got that way. Okay, so the most damaged book on my shelf is this copy of the Complete Works of Shakespeare. But it actually was like this when I got it. It was on sale at my local library for obvious reasons. It was sold like this. It was damaged so they were pulling it off the shelf. And I guess it was just really old because later after I got it I was reorganizing my shelves one day and then this happened. I went to pick it up and had a mini heart attack because <laughs> I thought the whole thing was going to come off. But so far, it's still been holding on, so long as I'm careful with it. Um, but I'm probably eventually just gonna get a new version, because this is pretty sad. Number 10, do you have any books on your shelves that have any printing errors? I don't think I do! Um, I mean, I can't think of it. Oh, wait, 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 okay. Alright, The Siblings of the Prophecy, it's not that big of a printing deal, but the pages printed kind of um, far apart on the right side. Um, farther apart than they do on the left side, so... I'm not sure if that counts, but it's the closest thing that I've got, actually. So fortunately, it's nothing major like a page printed upside down or anything like that, but... Number 11, what's the ugliest book spine on your shelf that sticks out like a sore thumb? I don't really have an ugly book spine. Sticks out like a sore thumb? I have two. And I'm going to show you why. So my copies of The Golden Braid and The Silent Songbird, both by Melanie Dickerson, do stick out like a sore thumb on my shelf because they're both missing the dust jackets. One of these days I'll probably get around to telling the story behind that on why I'm missing the dust jacket, but yeah, we've gotten to the point where they really stick out like a sore thumb and kind of bugged me. I am one day going to get around to buying new copies and having the dust jackets again, but until then, they'll just sit there like that. If you don't already have your dream bookshelves, what do your dream bookshelves look like? Oh gosh, my dream bookshelves? Um, <laughs> my dream bookshelf scenario would actually be having floor to ceiling bookshelves all along one wall and just full of books. That would be my dream bookshelves. But yeah, I love the floor to ceiling look where you know it gets to the point where you need a ladder to get up to the top shelf. I absolutely love that. Will I ever be able to have that in this room? No. I've been thinking of eventually down the road getting wall shelves and storybooks that way. 
Especially since I have the one wall by my bed that I mean it's basically an empty canvas for that. But my absolute dream bookshelf scenario would be wall to wall, floor to ceiling bookshelves. That's that's the dream. <laughs> What's the tallest book on your bookshelf? Um, that would be Inside Laura's Little House, The Little House of the Prairie Treasury, by Carolyn Strong Collins and Christina Weiss Erickson. It's uh, basically a little bit of a history book and a craft book. It has information on the Prairie Times and Laura's actual life. And then it also has, okay, it has some recipes in it, as well as some songs and other crafts. This was given to me by somebody, but I forget who. What's the smallest book on your bookshelf? That would be this, The Night Before Christmas by Clement Seymour. It's also the oldest book on my bookshelf. Number 15, what book is your most prized possession? Ooh, that's a tough one. Okay, I think I'm gonna pick The Hobbit translated into Latin by Mark Walker. This is the only book that I own that's in another language and also with Latin being a dead language that's like extra special. And then not only that but it has Tolkien's original drawing of smog on it done in like a, I guess you would call this a mosaic print I guess. I'm not kidding about the Latin part either. Just look. I do not understand a word of it, but it's in Latin, so <laughs> I'm very proud to have it on my shelf because languages fascinate me. Even though I never put any actual effort into learning languages. Gotta work on that. <laughs> Last one, what's a book that makes you slip back in time to a past memory when you see it on your bookshelf? I'm gonna pick this volume of the Complete Chronicles of Narnia. This is the Prince Caspian movie edition. And my mom got it when we first heard that the Prince Caspian movie was being worked on. And I absolutely loved Narnia. Narnia was really what got me into fantasy to begin with. And then after my mom got it, she read the books out loud to us for literature. Because we were homeschooled. Anytime I just sort of watch the Narnia movies or I see this book, I get kind of nostalgic and slip back to childhood intending also to get a new copy of this so that I can go back and read the books without worrying about further damaging the very much well loved and very well used copy that I have here. Okay, and that is the bookshelf time capsule for my particular bookshelf. This was actually pretty fun. Um, Jesse has done several other book tags, and I have actually made attempts at some of the book tags and some other book tags floating around on YouTube, but I never actually filmed them, at least not with the intent to post them on YouTube, so I don't know if any of you want me to redo any of them for you. If you do, let me know of the book tags that you want me to try. Because I do very much enjoy doing them. I hope that you all are having a very Merry Christmas Eve. Or Merry Christmas. Or that you had a Merry Christmas. Depending on when I get around to editing and uploading this video. But yeah. Merry Christmas wishes from past me. <laughs> and a very Happy New Year. Remember. Go out and be a fearless reader. Also, do me a favor and let me all know what you think about that outro. I don't really think that it works. Well, be honest with me, but gentle at the same time in the comments. Bye.